origins of Ekankar, the Who chant, and the path of the masters today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean of SpiritualAwakeningRadio.com. This program is heard every week at this time, exploring the world of spirituality, comparative religion, saints and mystics, especially the path of the masters, the way of the saints, the mystics of the East and the West. It says in the book Quintessence of Yoga, Secret of All Success, a Sant Mat publication from Maharishi Mehi Ashram. What's the use of receiving this human form if we do not serve others in thought, word, and deed? If we hold our thoughts only on worldly material things and refuse to think of that which is higher and more subtle, then our faith in the transcendental will inevitably diminish. This is from Ravi Shankar, the famous sitarist. You cannot just brush the surface of a culture and pretend that you found an answer. We must turn inward to the deepest of our own roots to find the very best of who we are. This is from Guru Kabir. The Five Pillars of Kabir Love, Humility, Compassion, Nonviolence, and Truth. These are the five jewels in life, according to Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, India. There are five real jewels in this world. Namely, one, association with sads, initiates, satsangis, devotees, the virtuous, sadhus, saints or sages. Two, saran or protection, taking the refuge of the satguru, resting at the feet of the master. Three, love. Four, humility. And five, compassion. The origins of the term Ekankar, the Hu chant, and the path of the masters. Also, vegetarian ethics today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. A question someone online asked me about an icon image that I had posted of Guru Nanak. Can you please tell me more about the symbol on Guru Nanak's palm, the palm of his hand? There are letters there. What are the letters and what do they mean? Some might assume the language is Hindi and the word is Om, but not quite. The Ek Onkar symbol means God is one. It is made up of two characters, the Punjabi character for the number one and the Punjabi letter for God or Onkar or Omkar, meaning God or God of Sound, God of the Om. In many icon images of Guru Nanak of the Sikhs, one often sees the same symbol on Guru Nanak's palm in the various portrayals of Guru Nanak, those great icon images. It also means, when someone is a master and is holding his hand up like that, When a spiritual master is waving to us in this way, showing the palm of his hand, this means he is giving us his blessing. The symbol Ek Onkar means God is one. Ek, or one, and Onkar, or Omkar, God. Ek Onkar, spelled various ways, I-K-O-N-K-A-R, 
I-K-O-N-G-K-A-A-R-E-K-A-N-K-A-R, to name a few ways of spelling it. These are alternate spellings of OM as well, or OM, A-U-M or O-M. The OMKAR, and refers to the sound current, the divine sound of the cosmos. Many layers of meaning are with this symbol found on the palm of Guru Nanak's hand, the, the Omkar, Ek Onkar. Ek Onkar is also the opening, in the opening verses of Guru Nanak's Japji or morning prayer, along with countless other references to Ekankar or Onkar, found in the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures of India, a gigantic book of psalms or hymns from India. Ekankar is the first phrase in the Mool Mantra, the opening phrase of Guru Nanak's Japji or morning prayer in the Sri Guru Granth Sahib. Ek Onkar, the creator of all is one. Satnam, truth is his name. He is the doer of everything. He is fearless without anger. He is undying, unborn, and self-illumined. This is revealed by the Satguru's grace. Meditate. He was true in the beginning. He was true through all the ages. He is true even now. O Nanak, he shall ever be true. The opening verses of Guru Nanak's morning prayer. In this case, I'm using a translation called Peace Lagoon, an anthology of the Sikh scriptures in contemporary English. Published long ago, once upon a time, by the 3HO, the Yogi Bhajan group. It's a very nice translation in contemporary English. Peace Lagoon. Origins of Ekankar, the Hu chant, or the Hu chant, and the path of the masters. The word Ekankar does not come and has never come from the Pali language or any dialect of Tibetan origin. Rather, it's Punjabi. Punjabi is an Indian language which belongs to the outer circle of Indo-Aryan languages. It nearly resembles Hindi and Urdu. Ekankar, Ekankar, are also alternate spellings of Om, A-U-M or O-M, the Omkar, and refers to the sound current, the divine sound that in the beginning created all things, the superstring of all things in the multiverse. Ekankar does not mean, and has never meant, conscious co-worker of the divine plan. However, back in the 1950s, Sant Kripal Singh did coin that term, conscious co-worker of the divine plan, and often used variations of it in his teachings, as can be confirmed with a serious search of his writings, most of which are available for free online at the Ruhani Satsang USA website, ruhanisatsangusa.org. He said, unless one becomes a conscious co-worker of the divine plan by complete surrender and annihilation of ego, the goal of spiritual perfection cannot be attained. Julian P. Johnson wrote in his great spiritual classic, authored back there in the 1920s or 30s, published long ago, a book known as Path of the Masters. In the literature of the saints, God is expressed by many words, such as Swami, which means Lord, Ekankar, Nirankar, Radha Swami, which means Lord of the Soul, Akal, which means Timeless, Nir Allah, Anami, which means nameless, Agim, Alak, terms for 
inaccessible and invisible. Sat Purush, true eternal original being. Akshar, Parameshwar, Akshar Parush, etc. All of these words have been coined in an effort to convey to human intelligence some idea of what the saints think of God, or the Lord God, the highest power. Ekankar, spelled here by Julian P. Johnson in his book Path of the Master, E-K-A-N-K-A-R, means the one oneness, the body of oneness. Nirankar means without body or form. Swami means the all-pervading Lord. Radha Swami, Radha for soul, and Swami meaning Lord, the Lord of the soul, Radha Swami. The word Radha in Hindi, when reversed, becomes Dara. This means current or stream of energy. The attribute of the soul. When the Dara is reversed, when it turns upwards away from the creation, it becomes Radha, the soul, says Julian P. Johnson. More from Julian P. Johnson's spiritual classic, Path of the Masters. Akal means timeless. Nirala means peerless, having none like him. Anami means without name or nameless. Agem means inaccessible. Sat Purush, true Lord, is really existing Lord, as distinguished from all hypothetical gods. That which is not Sat does not really exist. Sat means truth, reality, existence. Hence the fundamental idea of truth is existence. The untrue does not exist. The true does. Hence truth and existence are synonymous terms. Satsang means true association or associating with the eternal, timeless truth. Parush implies being and being implies creative energy, predominating and presiding Lord, the source of creative energy. The whole universe is considered as one, the true Ekankar. There is perfect oneness in the universe, which is also coexistent with God, infinite, unlimited. Hence, the Lord, Swami, is Nirankar, that is, formless. The formless, nameless, soundless, true God. A passage from Julian P. Johnson's spiritual classic, The Path of the Masters. Another reading from Path of the Masters. Would you try to write a book on medicine without using Latin and Greek words? In a work which deals with a science more accurate and exacting than the science of medicine, we cannot dispense with technical terms. In that ancient language are many terms giving the minutest shades of meaning to almost every psychological and spiritual experience possible to humanity. This is conclusive proof that psychology and spiritual experiences had been reduced to a science when Sanskrit was spoken in its formative periods. Today, Sanskrit sustains the same relation to spiritual science as do Greek and Latin to medicine and any of the other physical sciences. Julian P. Johnson in Path of the Masters says, The world has never been without a living master. Beneath all of the other impelling forces in the creation, spirituality is the primary cause. That and that alone is the driving force that always leaps up to join its source. 
In every living being, from tiny plant up to man, the spiritual flame of life is struggling upward and onward towards its source of being. And this process and this struggle must go on until the last speck of dust returns to the central fires of infinite being. Johnson in Path of the Masters. The message of the Masters fills the world with hope, and at the same time it offers a rational foundation for such hope. It not only informs people what they should do, but it offers them a definite method of doing it. In the march of the ages, cycle after cycle, on every planet where human beings reside. The great masters are the light bearers of that world. Until the end of the ages, they will remain the friends and saviors of those who struggle toward the light. Johnson writes, I remember as a young man, I, it took me four or five years to develop the ability to entertain the idea of inner worlds, or the finer worlds, above the physical, and of the possibility of actually learning anything reliable concerning them. Due to my old orthodox training, the very idea itself was almost beyond me. It all appeared to me the most visionary dream fantastic, the rankest folly of a biased mind. But in the East it is not so and never was, so far as we know. They have always had the idea. Meditation and seeing and hearing of things within one's self, trance, samadhi, leaving the body, and going out to travel in higher and finer worlds are all to the oriental mind quite normal ideas. The actual accomplishment of such things has generally been left to those who are specially qualified. The masters, however, tell us that the way is open for anyone to do these things if he or she will train him or herself for them. To the West, this entire subject is still more or less bizarre, abnormal, and fanciful. Such things are often attributed to some mental peculiarity or <laughs> to some pathological state of brain and nervous system. The practical Western man regards such things as produced by a morbid state of mental excitation, more or less unwholesome. Of course, they do not concede that such experiences can be reduced to a science. This is unfortunate for the West itself. Kipling may have been right when he said, East is East, and West is West, and never the twain shall meet. Readings from the book Path of the Masters by Julian P. Johnson, a great spiritual classic all about soul travel, exploring the higher planes of consciousness, 
becoming one with the audible life stream, the sound current, and going into the beyond. The third eye center is the portal to the kingdom of God within you. The audible life stream is a kind of transportation network or highway that leads back up through the planes of consciousness. You can actually read for free online. You can download as a PDF file if you like. Path of the Masters. Send me an email or text message. I'll send you a link. You can read all of the book. It's hundreds of pages. You can read the whole thing. Path of the Masters by Julian P. Johnson for free. Send me an email. Ask for the link to Path of the Masters. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com or send me a text message at this number 508 603 9381 After the break the Who chant the origins of the Who a very powerful mantra you're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more coming up. The Origins of Ekankar the Who Chant and The Path of the Masters today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. The Who Chant, the Sufi origins of Who and Sultan Bahu, the great Sufi poet mystic. I have some CDs of Turkish Sufis chanting Who during their zikr ceremony. The Who, sometimes spelled H-O-O, but also sometimes spelled H-U, by the Sufis, is the Sufi equivalent to the Hindu Om chant. It's traditionally pronounced Who by the Sufi mystics of Islam. It's a holy name that turns up in the poetry of Rumi and other Sufi poet mystics of the East, as we'll soon see. According to the Sant tradition of India, who is a sacred word esoterically associated with a plane of consciousness known as Trikuti, a heavenly realm also known as Brahm Lok. For Sufis and Sants, this name who also stands for the celestial sound current or Sati Sarma, the true Kalma or word, the audible life stream. The Who is chanted as a name of God, as well as it can also be used to refer to the ethereal sound current, music of the spheres or planes of heaven. To be sure, Who is a wonderful name of God, used in the East, the Middle East, and in Persia. For some Sufis, Who symbolizes and even mimics the sound current and was used in a special way to refer to the nameless God, the one whose real name is unpronounceable, truly beyond all earthly languages. It turns the human voice into a kind of vibration, who or who. was first made popular in the Western world by Julian P. Johnson, an influential author and disciple of Hazur Baba Sawan Singh back in the 1930s. He mentions the name Hu in his book Path of the Masters in a chapter titled The Sufi Idea of the Divine Vedan. In Path of the Masters, Johnson extensively quoted from a Sufi classic by Hazrat Anayat Khan, founder of the Sufi Order of the West, called The Mysticism of Sound, which is volume two in the Sufi message series. 
Julian Johnson writes, an extremely interesting Sufi effort to interpret the Surat Shabd or inner sound meditation of the masters is the following extract by Hazrat Anayat Khan. It shows how this central idea of the great Shabd or Shab, the sound, has taken hold of all mystic thought. Unquote. Khan mostly used the word who as a term for divine or cosmic sound, the true name for the otherwise nameless God. Hazrat Khan on the who as the sound or breath of God. The Supreme Being has been called by various names in different languages, but the mystics have known him as who, a natural name, not man-made, the only name of the nameless, which all nature constantly proclaims." Unquote. Khan also thought of the name who as a kind of universal proto-name that can be found contained within many other sacred names of God throughout the world in the various languages and world religions. Allahu Akbar Ahud Yahuva Yeshua Huda Ahura Mazda, a holy name in the Gathas of Zoroaster from Iran or Persia. And even in the word human, as in human being, he writes, quote, Hur in Arabic means the beauties of the heavens. Its real meaning is the expression of heavenly beauty. Zuhur in Arabic means manifestation especially that of God in nature. Ahura Mazda, or Lord of Light, is a name of God known to the Zoroastrians. This first word, Ahura, suggests who, upon which the whole name is built. All of these examples signify the origin of God in the word who, and the life of God in everything and being. Hazrat Anayat Khan, in his great spiritual classic, The Mysticism of Sound, heavily quoted and properly attributed by Julian P. Johnson, in his great spiritual classic known as The Path of the Masters, written during the early decades of the 20th century. Johnson himself, a devotee of a spiritual master who had a name who, in his name Pazur Baba Sawan Singh The book Path of the Masters by Julian P. Johnson is a free online book. I have a link I can send you. You can download it as a PDF file, read it in other ebook formats, Kindle and whatnot, or read it online, or click the audio icon and have archive.org read it for you, read it to you as a talking book. There are a couple of other books online I should mention that are available. The Mysticism of Sound, Volume 2 in the Sufi Message series by Hazrat Khan is an online book these days. And there's another secret book of the Sufis about the Who chant that I found online, which I can send the link to you if you would like to check that out and the other books too. Send me an email, ask for the links to Path of the Masters, the secret Sufi book about the Who or the mysticism of sound. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com james at spiritualawakeningradio.com or text message to this number 508-603-9381 Coming up after the break the Who chant of Hazrat Sultan 
Bahu. of Ekankar, the Who chant, and the path of the masters today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. It's great to be here every week, streaming live by way of HealthyLife.net, the Positive Talk Radio Network, and soon this program becomes a podcast. The Who chant of Hazrat Sultan Bahu. Sultan Bahu was born in 1628, passed on in 1691. He was a Sufi master of the inner light and sound of God, belonged to the Qudraya Sufi order founded by Sheikh Jalani, and lived in northern India. He's one of my favorite Sufi poets. Rumi used flowery language, saying, I'm going to talk over the heads of those who are extremist or literalist, and communicate to the mystic souls. I will keep my head today. Sultan Bahu, on the other hand, lets it all hang out there. He speaks his mind. He's the unvarnished, candid, Sufi poet mystic. There are two books that have been published in the English language making this wonderful poetry of Hazrat Sultan Bahu available in our part of the world. And they mention the sacred name Hu a lot. Bahu uses the Hu more than any other Sufi poet. There are two books, as I mentioned. One is Death Before Dying, the Sufi Poems of Sultan Bahu, published by University of California Press. And the R.S. Book Department, or Radhaswami Books, also known as scienceofthesoul.org, has one of its volumes of the Mystics of the East series, titled Sultan Bahu, translated into English by J.R. Puri, scienceofthesoul.org. The following ecstatic poems translated from Punjabi sometimes contain the word Hu, a name for God, as well as the audible life stream, the sound current, the sound of the upper worlds. In most all of his poems, in the original Punjabi language, every other line hypnotically ends with a who, making it very trancing for those who hear these poems recited in the original language. The name Bahu means with God or with Allah. Some mystic verses of Hazrat Sultan Bahu. Then in an ecstasy of love, you will repeat the name of Hu constantly, devoting every breath of your life in contemplation of him only when your soul merges in the essence of the Lord will you deserve the name Bahu. Who is within? Who is without? Who pervades everything? God or Allah is within. God or Allah is without. God or Allah pervades everything. Where then is Bahu to find who? He has wounded his own heart, he has tortured his own soul, with austerities of all manner, with worship of all kinds. Having read millions of books, he has also come to be called wise. But the name Fakir befits only him, O Bahu, whose very grave breathes life. Mystics live in this world as who personified. They practice the name that is the essence of God. They live in who? Beyond religion, beyond belief, 
and unbelief beyond life and death. If you explore the path within yourself, you will find God nearby through the royal vein. He now lives in me, and I in him, O Bahu. Not only distance from him, but even nearness to him have become irrelevant. God is within, God is without. God always reverberates in my heart. Who is within? Who is without? Who always reverberates in my heart? The wound in my heart aches constantly with the unabating pain of whose love. The darkness of ignorance departs from the heart lit by who. I sacrifice myself to the one Obahu who has realized the significance of who. Who is indeed a very beautiful and soothing name for God. For Sufis, it is truly a love song to God, the beloved Lord. Allahu Akbar, God is great. Sultan Bahu says, If you wish to learn the art of dying while living, go and sit in the company of mystics. My master has planted in my heart the jasmine of God's name. My master is a bird of paradise. He flies with his own kind. Through great fortune you will have his vision if the Lord pulls the strings of destiny in your favor. My master is to me my very life, O Bahu. He has permeated every pore of my being. I found a guide so perfect he opened the window of my heart. I give my life for that guide, Bahu, who told me the divine mystery. Those who enshrine the beloved in their hearts have both worlds at their command. Lovers remain completely intoxicated in the ecstasy of their love for the Beloved. They offer their souls to the Beloved while still living, and thus immortalize themselves in this life and in the hereafter, says Hazrat Sultan Bahu. Ekankar, the Hu Chant, and the Path of the Masters, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Julian Johnson said it best in his book, Path of the Masters, about the origin of the path, describing it as something that always has been. He says, in the march of the ages, cycle after cycle, on every planet where human beings reside, or sentient, conscious beings, if you will, the great masters are the light bearers of that world. Until the end of the ages, they will remain the friends and saviors of those who struggle toward the light. Masters of the East describe inner light and sound meditation as something not invented by human beings, but something invented by God, that the light and sound are naturally within every living thing a God-invented spiritual practice, not something invented by human beings. Something that's always been since the beginning of time. In the Sant tradition, the name Hu is very sacred. There are two different sets of five names that some are initiated with in Sant Mat. 
five Hindi names. But Muslim satsangis or spiritual seekers sometimes receive five Sufi or Arabic or Persian sounding names. Those remain secret, but I must say they do have a very beautiful cadence to them. The meditation practice is only revealed at the time of initiation, is on a need-to-know basis, in other words, but Maharishi Mehi Paramhans, in his wonderful textbook called The Philosophy of Liberation, or Moksha Darshan, describes the goals of the practice and gives a general description of the meditation practice. Maharishi Mehi Paramhans. In these four parts of satsang yoga, the practice of devotion and striving for liberation require seven means which are of paramount importance. Satsang, or association with the saints, which includes the study of their writings and scriptures. Siva, or selfless service, of a spiritual master. Love for God, or bhakti, moral rectitude, or ethics, in other words. Purity of heart, japa, manas jap, the repetition of divine names, also known as simran, or zikr. And meditation. In the practice of meditation in Sant Mat, both gross and subtle meditations are described. In subtle meditation, the meditation of the Bindu point, the meditation of light or Dristi Sadhana, the yoga of vision, and the meditation of sound, Surit Shabd Yoga, are described. If you go to the Google search engine, if you go to Google and type in Sant Mat Radhaswami books, you may find my e-library. Sant Mat Radhaswami books is divided up into many sections. You'll see a Kabir section, a Gnostic section, a vegetarian vegan section. You'll see a Kirpal Singh section, Radhaswami section, a Sikh Adi Granth section. A classic Sants of India section, that's Mirabai, Namdev, Rafi Das, all those great Sants. And there is a Sufi Rumi section. If you go there, you'll find links to online books in the Sufi category, including the mystic poetry of Hazrat Sultan Bahu online, a link to the Book of Murdad, a link to Hazrat Anayat Khan's Mysticism of Sound, the secret Book of Who I mentioned earlier, a link to that online, a link to the Bawa Muhayyadeen Sufi Library, Rumi Poetry, and lots more. Or I can send you a link to my e-library. Listen for my email address coming up. of the masters has always been a vegetarian path. There's something about meat that darkens one's inner vision. And the idea of soul travel or the ascension of the soul is all about lighting, lightning, or making lighter one's load. Vegetarianism in the East. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh once said, I must point out that animal food, even if a single particle is eaten, is detrimental to spiritual progress. In other words, for the masters, the vegetarian diet is not a matter of culture, but a matter of karma. Vegetarianism in the West, in the Aramaic New Testament, Gospel of Luke, Yeshua said, Now beware in yourselves that your hearts do not become heavy with the eating of flesh and with the intoxication of wine and with the anxiety of the world. And Pythagoras, considered to be a Western master of the inner light and sound, once said, 
Our earth has abundance of such pure and harmless foods, and there is no need for us to partake of meals for which blood has to be shed and innocent life sacrificed. For as long as men massacre animals, they will kill each other. Indeed, he who sows the seed of murder and pain cannot reap joy and love, said Pythagoras over 2,300 years ago. We'll catch up. We'll catch up in the Western world real soon. To get links to the books I've mentioned on today's program, send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com or a text message to this number, 508-603-9381. Thanks to those of you who support this program and help keep it on the air. At my website, there is a donate button, as well as buttons that go to my blog, mailing list, the world of social media as well, daily spiritual quotes at Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and other sites. My website is at this address, spiritualawakeningradio.com. Thanks for joining me today for this program about the origins of Ekankar, the Who Chant, and the Path of the Masters. For Spiritual Awakening, I'm James Bean. Mm-hmm.